Yo, I'm Carlin. I'm Lunga. And this is The Bench. AFCON edition. AFCON review edition. Review edition, edition review. I just AFCON edition. Why Afcon. are we changing it on the like... AFCON edition. AFCON edition. So yeah, round of 16, Lunga. Yeah. Yeah, firstly, actually, where's Narika? I feel like we should, we should address that. Where is she, yeah? She's not with us. She's today. not with us. Oh, why? You, that makes it sound like she's gone, like forever. I, for some people watching, it's like, <laughs> oh no, they probably changed channels already because. Oh, no, 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 no. Nurika's still part of the page. She's just not committed anymore, I read. Who is she know? committed to? All right, you know. Clearly, it's not the commitment of the bench. She's kind of skeptical. I think we're probably in a contract dispute. You spoke, you spoke about money in the yeah, other it's episode. Money talk. Now, you know, we're out here having contract disputes with our talent, you know? No, we, but we're we, trying to get them to sign the extension. We can't. Saying, we nah. can't wait for it to come back. Yeah, so you got to keep on pushing, 100%. pushing the content for you. But yeah, round of sixteen, Afcon. Thoughts? A tricky round of sixteen. It was. It was. You know, when you get to the knockout stages, losing means you go home, and it I don't does. think I don't think I was ready. I was never ready for what happened this week. Mm-hmm. I mean, what? Some couple of upsets, you know. Upsets. You know, giants going home. Banging goals, you know. Teams I, coming in clutch. Right. I said that the, we don't get this action in that competition that happens on another continent. You know, as FCON, we get a lot of things, and I mean, we do. It's providing. It's providing. You know. So yeah, going into the first game, we got Burkina Faso versus Gabon. One all. One all. Penalty shootouts. Penalty shootout. Burkina Faso went through. Yeah, um, no surprises there. No surprises. Burkina Faso being led by Bertrand Traore. Mm-hmm. They were brilliant player. Brilliant player. He's actually been brilliant for a while, um, but I don't think he's stepped up to like, like that level he should have been. Yeah, like world class level. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, to get your team into the quarterfinals, yeah. no, that's more than decent. That's vibes. That's vibes. I mean, he didn't miss a pin, so. He did, but and that then, doesn't matter now. And then he came back with a goal, so like kind of redemption season. It is, you know. So I mean. We did say Burkina Faso was the favorite, I think, going into this team because Gabon don't have, you know, their favorite player. Not favorite player, but their best player in Aubameyang still. So it was going to be a tough task. They don't really have strikers. They survived, all. though. They, they, survived. they got there without yeah. him. Yeah. I don't think it mattered that much in this round of 16 mm-hmm. game. I think whenever it comes to the knockout games, you just need to perform and... This time, Burkina Faso did what they had to do and they came out on top. Yeah, but I mean, it was admirable for Gabon. I mean, last minute or last second equalizer for them. Yeah. You know, in order to take it to penalties. And then penalties, anything happens. So. It's, you still have to. I know you, you would say anything happens because your reputation with penalties, I cannot even yeah. begin. I was actually telling people during the week, I was like, when we were watching AFCON and we've seen the pins, I, I've never scored a pin in my entire life. And we've, I'm proud. We've. Gone home from tournaments yeah, no, because I'm proud. you I'm proud. always miss the pin. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to hide How it. How can you, know? you be proud of that? I have the personality to take a pin, but I don't have the capacity to put it back in the net. Second game in the round of 16, Nigeria versus Tunisia. Lunga, your team is out. My team is out, mm. and I think going forward, I'm not naming any teams. Yeah, because, I mean, you had Zoom. I had Zoom. They went out. they gone home. You had Nigeria. They've gone home. They're home. There was some nice comments that I saw about a team that could potentially go far. Yeah. I'm not going to mention the name. Mention the name. Because No, because I want the team to go further. Oh, okay. We'll get to that game. Yeah, no, but we still will get to that game. I don't yeah. want... So I'm not yeah, mentioning yeah, any yeah, more yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. We're just, you know... Yeah. But I'm sad. I'm sad we'll that Nigeria that. are gone. I think... Yeah. I think we had a conversation before. Like, how does Tunisia keep qualifying for World Cup tournaments? Right. And then we were, we were like, they're actually quite a good team. Yes. And the setup and stuff, because the players actually play together and stuff. And I mean, for so proven. long. They proved So it. they haven't had the greatest of tournaments. Mm-hmm. However... They've overcome adversity, and yeah. when it really matters, they up. All so to that. beat Nigeria one 0 yeah, a Nigerian team that was feared by everybody. They were they were the favorite in the tournament. We saw in the comments with the whole competition, everybody was saying Super Eagles, they Super Eagles. Now three games in a row in group stages. Right. Obviously, you're going to be favorites to mm-hmm. to beat Tunisia, who yeah. were unable to uh, win all their games. Yeah, I mean, especially the way that they dominated those three games also was kind yeah. of like you knew. I, I think. Even as a fan watching it, they compared to all the other teams, maybe like Cameroon, but like Nigeria played with that flair that were like chest out. We're gonna win every game. We definitely the the tournament favorite. But I mean, at the end of the day, they came up short. They did. They also had a red card. They did have a red card. Alex Iwobi. 
He will be, and I'm tired of seeing red cards in this tournament. Yeah. Can't lie about that. that was what? That was because we had two in the first game, Burkina Faso, Gabon, and then now this will be the third one. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but referees need to calm down. You know what I've realized? Yeah. After watching all these games, yeah. I don't need. We don't need a ref. <laughs> Yeah, we do? we play football on a Sunday uh, and there's this gentleman's rules, you know? Oh yeah, so at like, some point if it's a foul, it's a foul, yeah, you give the ball back. Yeah. I think that's what we need, because these refs here are just trigger happy and they just they're affecting so many games. But it's VAR. It's VAR. I that's mean VAR. some of some of some of the, the, the red cards were just and then some of them it's like those fifty fifty ones where you just like you don't really know now. It could have went anyway, you know. Could have been yellow. Is, this is Nigeria, Tunisia. Mm. Leave red cards aside and let's just watch. Let the, let the guys play. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, a red card, Alex will be second off. It's not even like late. It's not even like ninety third minute red yeah, card. Yeah, it's yeah. like crunch. You know, middle of the game, sixty six minute. You do need all of the players in order to come back. You know, and I think it was just. Huh? What's the word? Inexperience. You can't say inexperienced. He's an experienced player. I think like, he was cold. Like he, yeah, he, he, he wasn't, wasn't in the starting lineup yeah, throughout the uh, whole group stages, and now he got his opportunity. Yeah, it's a big game. I yeah. think he, compared to other players who had been playing, mm-hmm. he wasn't up to speed yeah, with the yeah. whole Super Eagles team. He wasn't so. like the Moses Simons and them, you know, At who, all. who were pulling. But yeah, sad to see them leave. Sad to see them leave. But I mean, big up to Nizia. My dark horse, I think, of the tournament. In Guinea went out now in this game. They lost to Gambia. The Gambia. The Gambia. The Gambia. Get it right. One no, you know, so. I mean, if the world didn't know about the Gambia, they now, know hey, about the Gambia hey, now. Hey, and hey. to be fair, I didn't know much about the Gambia. And now you know. The Gambia is playing football. They really are playing football. I say it every week, guys. I come onto this thing and I say that first statement that I made about the Gambia. I've yeah. retracted it. So don't come for me in the comments below and be like, I know nothing. Guys, I support the Gambia. You support the Gambia? I don't support them in Africa because I didn't think they were going to win. Yeah. Right? I had other teams ahead of them. But I mean, hey, they, these guys are bowling, fam. They are. So they beat yeah. Guinea 1-0. No. Yeah. Musa Barrow with the goal. Yeah. And I mean, that's a very talented player. He plays in Syria, you know. I mean, now we know the players. Now we do know the players. You know what I mean? Like, if you took the name of the Gambia, you wouldn't associate them with, like, proper bowlers, you know, because it's such a small country. But yeah. then it just shows that Africa, talent is spread. Throughout the entire continent, so through to the quarterfinals. Through to the quarterfinals for the first time, ever. You know, first time ever. Is it of. is it a fairy tale run? It might be. It might be a fairy tale run. I mean, how far? Dependent on who they drew on the quarterfinals, it depends if they're gonna make it to the semifinals. And as we said from the beginning, knockout round. Anything can. Anything happen. goes, fam. Yeah. It's like literally ninety minutes can decide your fate in or out. We've seen it. Nigeria versus Tunisia, Tunisia knocked them guys out. So now we got the Gambia who knocked Guinea out. And Guinea had some stars, fam. They did have stars. Yeah. I so I think also it's interesting to see if if the players are now getting used to Cameroon conditions. Because yeah. they've been there for a while now. Yeah. I don't know how long the Gambian team have been together. Mm-hmm. But I assume that they don't have players who had to come in too late into the tournament. And even if they did, yeah. they've been together for more than two weeks now. So... Yeah. That's time a, to play football. That's actually a smart take. I mean, because remember when we spoke about it, we were like, a lot of these pl- these teams who had a lot of European players yeah. came to the training camps very late. Yeah. You know? And we saw that in Algeria. Now we probably saw it in the Nigerian team. You yes, know? And yes, those teams yes. are not in the tournament anymore. You know? True. So now we, it might be, I feel like that's a stat that people should look into. Like, how many African based players a team has and how many, like, the majority of the teams are in, like, the knockout stages now. Good luck. Smart. Good luck to the Gambia. That's why you're here on the bench, fam. Yeah, so tournament favourites, Cameroon, went up against Comoro. They won 2-1, but... Hey, Cameroon won, but... But there's politics. There's politics. There's a lot of politics. And then there's this. But you started on the side of the politics saying that guys should have played. So the biggest story of this game, I think, was Comoros going into the game without a recognised goalkeeper. Yeah. Lunga said there's politics. I mean, let the goalkeeper play. Test the negative. But then he had to isolate. But he tested negative. And it was a, there could have been a false negative. There's could a lot been. of situations that it could have been. Sure. Right. Test them again. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It depends on the on the on the organizing body itself. No, that's true, things. that's true. So better like, safe than sorry. Better safe than sorry. We don't want another outbreak, you know, in these tough conditions. Yeah. But I mean, they ended up going into the game. I mean, imagine going into a major tournament and starting a game. 
without a recognized goalkeeper. With a left back. With a left back. Five foot seven. Right. Not even like your tallest player in the team. Yeah. Just a five foot seven guy in the net. He didn't even have a shirt. He taped the number over his shirt. There only in Africa. Only in Africa, fam. And I mean, only in Africa can a left back put in the performance in the nets the way he did. He had four saves, eh? Four saves. He had more. Th- I- I think he had more than Onana. Nah, on the no nights. way. Because Onana was cooking also. Yeah, but Onana's oh, no, a goalkeeper. Okay. I know, yeah, Onana's a goalkeeper, goalkeeper so we expect yeah, him yeah, yeah. to be making yeah. the saves. But here we had Komo's left yeah. back playing in goals. Yeah, Did I mean, well, playing sweeper keeper. When right. we were watching, we were like, it's like when you're playing an indoor game mm, or just mm. Sunday with friends and yeah, you're like... Yeah. Flag goalie. Yeah. yeah. That's what he was doing. Yeah, he was literally out there. I feel like this guy was putting himself on notice for like the top teams in the world. That's the that's the kind of football like Pip and them want to play where they have the keeper there and he's like part of the players on the oh, pitch. 100%. You know, and it just keeps the whole game flowing. Not like somebody who just sits in your box and there's to save the ball. But I mean, Shaka Aladur, my guy, we salute you. You know, you probably play with the tournament or fans play with the tournament. Fans play with the tournament, fam. By playing goals. By playing go- I'm making nah. the saves. The man made a double save at you, one point. He might be a national hero, national but you're, hero not, you're, sure. not, you're not player of the tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, he did what he could have done. But yeah. I think at the end of the day, Cameroon just had too much for them on the day. And too much in the form of Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. I wonder... Yo, my man is sitting in all directions right now. I, I need to know what's happening in Enrique's DMs. Right. And I mean, if he can score nine <laughs> goals in the, in, the, in, in the AFCON, maybe he can... He's not there yet, though. Let's not say nine goals. He's only scored... No, I'm saying, like, the record is nine. Yeah. He's on six. He has potentially a quarterfinal, semifinal, and a final. So three games to get three goals, you know? It's not that easy. It's I not that easy. You just gave them too many wins there. I, I didn't give them the win. I said potentially... He has those games okay. to score goals, you know. So it could be tough, but he is chasing the record, you know. So A goal and an assist. So mm-hmm. he's not just doing one part of the game, he's doing all parts of the game. And that makes him still player of the tournament. Yeah, I know. I mean, the, the whole conversation was Moses Simon and him. And I think yeah. now with Nigeria gone, it's, it's just, only him. It's Obubaka is the favorite. He's like right out there as being the favorite in, in, the, in the whole competition. But yeah, Cameroon now, personally... I think they're the favorite of the competition going forward. Okay. You know, but every time we pick the favorite on the bench, I think we've always had the bench curse, and our favorite has always got it knocked out. So, so you're still continuing with picking a favorite? Yes, because I don't believe in curses, and I feel like Cameroon <sighs> have enough to do it. Well, they do, they do. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. So Senegal, Cape Verde, Senegal went through to the quarterfinals, beating Cape Verde 2 0. Yeah. Side of money with the goal. All right, and I mean, Senegal's. First goal from open play, because I'm in the group stage, they only won one game, and that was on the penalty against them, and then they drew two. No, no. So now... It's been hard to watch Senegal's it's games. Been, it's been hard. I but can't I think, lie about that. Hey, this game here, from out of the, straight out the blocks, they were banging firm. I mean, they came out... Not the goals, though. Not the goals, but the way Senegal played, you were like, actually, this is the Senegal that everybody expected. I mean, first yeah, minute in the game, true. I was shook. I was like, yo, down the wing, hitting the bar. Ball coming back out, Sadio Mane shot, hitting the ball again. Like, you know, this game, you could just see Senegal were the, were the outright favourites from the beginning, you know? I suppose they are firing at the right time, and that's what you yeah. need from a team in the knockout stages. Yeah. And so, 2-0, very yeah. good victory. Yeah, I mean, 2-0, it was clean sheet, very good victory. I think what helped them in the end of it was Cape Verde getting a red card, you again. know, also. Again. It was like six red cards in the round of 16 in the first five games. Refs were going, refs were going brazy, you know. So they, I think refs are, are, are doing too much. Yeah, they're, they're taking away hey, from the game. Hey, you sound like one of those old guys who, who watch football in the 80s. Ah. But then now, they're like, these boys can't play. You're too soft. No, no, no. It's not, I mean, it's not soft red cards. It's just too many red cards. But they, it was duly given red cards. That's the thing. Okay, for example, yeah. the Cape Verde goalkeeper yeah. comes out to punch the ball. Okay. He only has eyes on the ball. Mm-hmm. He knocks out Saido Mane. Hey, that was intense though. That, then, the, the intent was not to hurt him. It, was, it wasn't the intent to hurt him, but I mean, at the end of the day, the result is the player got injured. So Did he, he wasn't injured though because he scored. He scored and then literally a second after he scored, he was like, guys, I can't see anything. And then he went to the hospital. That's true. You're That's right. true. So, so I'll give you that. You know, we hope Sadio Mane is okay. You know, but at the end of the day, he did get his goal. He put his team through to the quarterfinals. Senegal are through. I think they need him. 
They do need him. But if he really was concussed, then he's not there for the next game. True. How long are you going to be out for? I don't know. They say, like, if you're out for, like, a minute, you're out for a week. Damn. So that's, like, the rates. But yeah. we don't know what's up. So we we're don't hoping know he's healthy. Yeah, he's probably healthy, hopefully. Yeah. You know, so hopefully he can be there for the quarterfinals. And I think also Senegal, the officer's performance, go right up there with Cameroon as being, like, favorite of the tournament so You can far. curse them, though. Why? Because that's what you're doing right now. You, I'm you're, not cursing. I told you're you making them favorites. I don't believe in the bench curse, you know. Okay. This here is a safe space, you know. I would like to see Senegal lose. Damn, look, why? I haven't healed. I need to do a lot of healing. But we move. I told you, 2022 is a year of reconciliation, fam. You, you, know, you know, just come to terms with everything and then just move on. That's true. Yeah. Next game in the round of 16, Morocco versus Malawi. I think at the end of the day, the favorite went through on this one. Morocco beat Malawi 2-1. I was sad. I was also sad. I really wanted Malawi to go through, obviously. Right, South They Africa. are neighbors, they are right. brothers in arms. We mm-hmm. in it together. Mm-hmm. And for a second, they almost did. Right. They, I they, thought they were through. If that's, if that's that, the type of goal the that goal they that, threw, hey. The goal that Mahango scored. Hey. Wow. Hey. Hey. I the, mean. The foresight to see that the goalkeeper right. is not on his line. Right. And, and he also top win that. I probably that's up there with the guy from Comoros who oh, no, the top win. That's like probably if you had a fan vote, I think that's going like 49, 51, you know. Like it's edging out. Those are two of the best goals we've seen. Yeah. And that happened in the round of sixteen. So a very good goal from Mango from yards away yards from goal. Out. Uh, yeah, I mean like probably like forty yards out. Even more. On the run. And I mean he was up against Hakimi. For a second day, we thought Hakimi's career was was over. I I said it hey, to you. I was like, was I was like, look at this man who right. plays in the DSTV Premiership, D- finishing DSTV Hakimi. Prim, fam. I mean, and, and I, I was like, say. Hakimi's career is over right, right now. He's getting finished by somebody who plays, you know, in our league domestically. Yeah. On the weekend, and you know, people always like to say that the DSTV Prem doesn't have goals, and we don't have excitement, fam. Go watch it. If you saw the goal Mango scored, that's what we had. That was worthy of it. It was, but I mean... But then... They didn't hold on for long. Yeah, they say, what, form is temporary and class is permanent. Class is permanent. Class is permanent. The Moroccan team, again, similar to Tunisia, they haven't been the greatest. Haven't been the greatest. But they always go far. They always World Cup qualifiers or in AFCON, Mm -hmm. they always put up the performances and... That's a fact, though. They started off with that goal from... In Israel. In Israel, I mean, weird striker. A large striker though No large. but that's what he does In La Liga as well yeah, Just yeah. dominate in the air yeah, Put yeah. the ball in the box And no, he's going to finish it No balance No agility You know it's just But he's the, got the finish The physicality He reminds me of like a Like a Chris Wood Or, or Grant No respect him Or Grant Holt No he's know? better than that Or yeah that, what do you mean, fam? We literally said he's just a large guy Put it in the air Head of the ball uh, But it goes in Those uh, are top quality players also no, but he's got more to his game. Grant Holt was almost a top goal scorer in the Premier League. Yeah, but he Chris wasn't. Wood just went to Newcastle for 25 M's, fam. But Al Nasseri plays for Sevilla. Right. He the, plays in Europe. The same he's team. He's doing more. He's also at an AFCON competition he right is. now. And he's doing it on both ends also. So, yeah. he's actually a decent striker. He is a very decent striker. So shout out to him. They went to halftime 1-1. Second half of the game. Hakimi, Hakimi must have read the text between you Fem, and I. I don't know. FBI agent was, was hacking our phone. And next thing you know, Hakimi probably heard it half time. Came back. Banger. Also. Free kick. Probably another contender for goal of the tournament. No, that was a very well struck yeah. free kick. I didn't, I didn't know he had that. I either. really didn't know he had it. Either. I know he's a goal scoring right yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Probably like a right wing back. Right wing back. Anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean. A f- insane. Nice set piece In- taker. Insane. Insane. I mean. It, it, I want to see him do it again though. <laughs> I challenge him. I challenge him to do it again, but take nothing away from what he did. That was a beautiful goal. I would say you do it in Champions League, but I mean, your team's not there, so you don't need to watch Champions League. No, that's fine. We're talking about AFCON here, yeah. so... But I mean, shout out to him. He's probably showing why he's worth what he is worth in Europe, in the league he, is play- he plays in, and why he plays with the team he plays in, because no, when you watch that Moroccan team, a lot of the, the football goes through Ashraf Hakimi, and it's just... You can see he's such an integral part of that team, you know? No, he's a very good footballer. Yeah. And I mean, shout out to, to, to Morocco for going through. Another favourite probably in the round of 16. You've, they, got not, you've got three favourites now. Hey, but I'm stacking them up. All I'm doing is saying the favourites who are actually <laughs> making it through, unlike your team, Nigeria and 
other teams who shall not be mentioned right now yeah are getting knocked out at least you have the favorites doing business and, and no, that's through. true the, yeah. the 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 highest ranked teams are actually yeah. showing what happens to happen in the round of 16 yeah. and so we respect them for that yeah but we always do love our underdog story so it would have been nice to see malawi go through but not this time not this time Ivory Coast was Egypt, probably the biggest game of the round of 16 in terms of pedigree. Yeah, definitely. Also, right. tension. Tension. I was nervous watching the game. Right. I mean, this, these are two teams who will probably face each other a lot in African history, you know, and usually like lesser stages, like semifinals and finals, you know. So they do have a lot of history between the two of them. At the end of the day, my choice to win the African wins out. So I guess. And Ivory Coast. Nigeria's out, Ivory Coast out, Cote d'Ivoire is out. So. But the way they went out, I think it's better than. Nigeria. They didn't lose the game. They did lose the game. Technically, it's a draw. You know, it's not a draw. No, they lost in penalties. Te technically, it's a draw, and then you lose on pens. You know. No, but they they lost, and I think. No, but after ninety minutes or one hundred twenty minutes, came the draw. So penalties. You know? You're so you you're attached right now. If we are putting our our our, our football takes against each other, mine's here, yours is here. So I can take that, but yeah. both teams are at home. So both are. we both at home. Right, and I mean, again, Egypt probably being the second best in this game, you know. In the yeah, they they game. were not they were not better than Cote d'Ivoire yeah. in my opinion. They weren't better than Cote d'Ivoire had a lot of chances. I think at the end of the day, they keep Al Shanawi was keeping them in the game all the time. A man coached by our own great Pizza Masimane, so it just shows caliber, caliber of players, fam. You know? No, that's true. But also, I, I, I do feel like Cote d'Ivoire are playing with a lot more pressure. They're not yeah. part of the World Cup qualification, yeah. so Afcon. Was, I said it to you earlier. They had to, they had to show up and mm. try to win Afcon just mm -hmm. to bring back something some at football, home, some footballing pride. Back yeah, because yeah. they, they far too good to be yeah. where they are right yeah. now as a team, and I think they let themselves down honestly by losing that penalty yeah, shootout. Yeah, that's a fact. I mean, to lose on penalties at the end of the day, yes, he didn't score in the 90 minutes or 120 minutes, but yeah. man like Mo Salah came through with the clutch penalty. I mean, it just any clutch player, any big name player, you usually take the first pen. Or, or the you, last one. Or you take the last one that, you know, everything mm. rides on. And at the end of the day, he took the one, he put it in the back of the net. But I think it was an easy one, though. Because that was a pin to put your team through. The the, the one that's hard... is the one that comes up if it, you miss. It's what, like, now it's the pin in order to take it to sudden death. You know? Like, the, those ones, they, if you're taking the pin second and if you miss, then you're out. But you still have to score it, to be fair. You still have to score it, but I mean, there's not that much riding. you got to miss, then there's somebody after him could have scored, you know? You know, oh but he well. didn't miss. He didn't miss. And that's what makes him great. It shows why he's the best player in the world. At the oh. moment. Keyword. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry. But yeah, Mo Salah. Shout out to him. Uh, Liverpool fans, we don't care about you. This is AFCON Review. But yeah, best player in the world. Hopefully Egypt live up to the hype. You know, going in through further to the semi-finals. Again, you and I spoke. We said Northern African teams doing butts. No, they... Whenever it's time to win, Northern African teams do win. And right. so it's quite scary to see them doing it again, even though they haven't looked the prettiest. Yeah. But it's but all about some, the results. Yeah, for some reason, they, they have the results. I mean, Algeria probably let the Northern African teams down, yeah. let their contingent down. But I mean, the rest of them who are still in the competition, doing extremely well. That's true. So, again, let me add a fourth favorite here. I'll probably say each. <laughs> I would say Egypt are going to be another favorite going in. So now we have four favorites. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mali vs Equatorial Guinea on the same day. No, no. Another game ended in penalties. Nothing more to say. Nothing more to say. <laughs> I think other than Mali was probably the favorite going into it. In my opinion, Mali were favorites going into it. Yeah, I guess so. All right. And I mean, for them to get knocked out by Equatorial Guinea, it's similar to the Gambia, you know? upsetting other people and now going far you know so shout out equatorial guinea that's true i yeah. did not see equatorial guinea getting yeah. to the quarterfinals of an afcon right and i mean what uh, you and i sat and we spoke last week we were like yo for some reason mali they have a reputation for having a very strong side yeah at every competition and they whenever play. they need the points right. or they need to go through to the next round they're able to do it right i mean it, it, it's not necessarily that they have the biggest stars you know in the, on the continent yeah but for some reason the team that they put together is always a strong team you know but equatorial guinea's been playing with a right. lot of hearts like they've, they've surprised me i right. can't lie about that right they football 
I wouldn't say it's been the prettiest, right. but their commitment to the game and actually seeing the emotions every time they score, they mm-hmm. celebrate together as a team. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they won the penalty shootout, everyone was in tears. They were just... They know it's football heritage, guys. We're making history right now. They could be a threat to wherever they meet, actually. I think uh, sometimes yeah. passion can yeah. go a long way yeah. in terms of pushing a team to like new levels that they've never reached before. Yeah, and I mean, if anything, if this AFCON has anything to go by, we've seen a lot of the big teams choke. Yeah, you that's know? true. So choking is a trend that we do see in the AFCON. And if a bigger team is matched up against Equatorial Guinea, hey, anything, anything can happen. That's you know? true. 90 minutes, as we said, Equatorial Guinea might see themselves not just in a quarterfinal, but a semi-final. So maybe. Who knows? Maybe. But I mean, again, clutch. I mean, this penalty shootout was also a tough one. Five, six on penalties. It was back and forth. Right. I mean, people were putting it in the net. At the end of the day, we said you got to put them in in order to go through and Equatorial Guinea did the job. That's true. Also, a lot of saves by Equatorial Guinea's goalkeeper, yeah. which actually helped them get past and through the yeah. penalty shootouts. Yeah. I think... Uh, this is the fifth favorite of mine. <laughs> don't you don't even know name name an Equatorial Guinea player? I don't know, but now that the fact that there's a guy with the pink hair. Yes, I, I know the cool. ho- I know the homie with the pink hair. He's cool. I know the homie with the pink hair. So I don't know his name. If you know his name, drop his name in the comments, guys. Yeah. But yeah, no Equatorial Guinea. They do move with some other kind of flair, though. They I can't do. lie. I can't lie. The way the guys dress, the way they they play the ball, the way they just. You know, oh, as a that's team. the passion I'm talking about. Right. Like, it's surprising, mm-hmm. but they they show it on the field as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah. Guys with the flair, guys with the pink hair, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm rhyming, but yeah, Equatorial Guinea. Yeah, so I know it's a football show. You know, we love to banter and joke about everything, but I think the, the tragic incident that happened at the Comores and Cameroon game this past week is something that affected a lot of people. So our thoughts and prayers are with anybody who did lose any family member or any loved one at that stadium. So yeah, 